Brian, let's close out today with one third of single family homes for sale are newly built. Report finds. Here's what buyers need to know. So I wanted to just, when I saw this article, it was funny because I was watching another video and the video was talking about permits uh, for San Diego. And they said in the last 12 months, San Diego has only pulled 3,100 permits for single family residences. 3,100? 3, 3,100. Wait, wait when, was, when was the time frame of this? Uh, in the last 12 months. What? Yeah. No. Yeah. 3,100? And uh, um, it's through ReVenture, uh, ReVenture app on uh, on YouTube. And I, I cross-referenced. I looked through the data and everything, and I was like, oh, shoot. Like, that's ridiculous. That's, like, so crazy because, we. I mean, we're talking about exactly that, like, the shortage inventory. And <clears throat> that right there, if it doesn't, like, alarm you because they're not building enough properties and it's you know it, it only just has more fuel to the fire well it means a couple things it's, that means number one prices are going to stay where they're at yep. or even go up because yep. of lack of inventory yep. um which, well and what's interesting too though is because that is really really thin compared to what this report is this and report says that 33 <laughs> point this one says 33.4 percent of single family homes available for sale in the first quarter were newly built Almost double from pre-pandemic levels. Not true here. Yeah. According to a new report by Redfin, the real estate brokerage site. So uh, what the claim is that what's happened is the level of resale inventory has shrunk. Well, that's part of it. Yeah. But in cases where in like our town, 3,100 permits in 12 months is not enough for all the demand. It actually forces there to be potentially more resale. And that also means the people that are selling their house now, their pre-existing home. There isn't necessarily just a new build around the corner coming and waiting for them. Nope. So, <laughs> and I mean, and that all combined is literally what kind of like puts us in a in a lock because it's like we can only move so far when we run into a problem. Yes, and it's also but it's also confirming that that what they're saying here is also true too. It's like two things are true at the same time. It doesn't mean necessarily that new construction has ramped up. No, true, hundred percent true. And again, maybe this is going to be. You know, section by section, you know, across across the country, it's gonna be different. But um, I, I mean, I guess I would expect this to be the case. The the fact that it's twice the pre pandemic level means that developers are really more interested in making new homes now than they were, you know, two thousand eighteen nineteen. But that's still that's still really weird because you're talking about it, at, you know, higher cost of building. Uh, harder to build. We've talked about this on the show yeah, too, yeah. with uh, regulatory <laughs> regulatory stuff, um, and that. you have the consumer with the lowest affordability in years and rates the highest they've been in twenty some odd years. And they're like, so, let's build. <laughs> so it's kind of like it. It seems like upside down, but I mean, look, if we're gonna trust these numbers, uh, and that's twice as much as the pre pandemic level, uh, builders, that's pretty startling. Builders are like, hey, 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 better late than never, huh? <laughs> yeah, but well, yes. Okay, look, look. Okay, so if I put my builder hat on and I'm like, I'm a builder, I need to build homes in order to make money. Like, what, you're just gonna wait around forever? No, you still have to build homes if that's how you make money. So, same thing for us here. Like, we make loans. All right. Well, in any market condition, in any situation, in any still rate environment, loans. we still have to do loans because guess what? People's lives are still happening. They're still PCSing in San Diego because they're getting stationed here. They're leaving San Diego and they need to sell, or they're renting their place out. Da 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 da. All these reasons. So, I'm not totally like caught off guard by it, but. Um, I, I, they, I, it's I, just, it is just weird to me that it's this much more now than it was before because the, the conditions were way more favorable before. I mean, the, the cost of borrowing money was way was, more favorable. Was but the, <laughs> like the lowest it was uh, forever, and now it's way higher to borrow money to do the building at a higher cost with more regulatory stuff uh, and with the consumer having higher rates. It's like literally the whole thing is upside down. I mean, I must be. Maybe I'm missing something. I, I don't know. know. And, and I was gonna say, do you think? And I don't know if right, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, or just you know, give me your input. But do you think it's because now it's costing them more not to build, even though things are more expensive? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you I know, know what I mean? like d- damn like, if you do, damn if you don't. Like before, it was like the, it's costing us too much to build, and now it's costing us too much not to build. So it's like I don't know. I mean, yeah. maybe. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it could it could be. I mean, uh, maybe you know. There's obviously a lot of moving parts here because yeah. you're also talking about. You know, cost to build relative to resale price, and if resale price is higher now. Well, then, yeah, go build the thing. You might make more margin today than you do back then, but maybe it's proportionate to costs. Yeah, maybe you're making a hundred thousand dollars a build. You know, in two thousand nineteen, maybe you're still making only a hundred thousand dollars in twenty twenty four. 
I don't know. You get my point? Yeah, I mean, just slimmer profits is basically, I mean, what's it like make something or not make anything, but either way, it's going to cost you more. No, I'm saying the, the profit could be the same no matter what the market's doing. Oh, yeah. my, my cost to build was down here. And our resale price was up here. Six years later, guess what? My cost is up here. My cost, my, my profit's my, my still the same. Yeah, the profit might be the same. Maybe the profit is less. I don't know. I, I actually don't know that when I'm citing. I'm just reading this particular article, but I'm just hypothesizing that it could be that because you have things that are like that are that are just that are up and to the right. Mortgage rates are up and to the right. Median sales price is up and to the right. Uh, down here, bottom of the article, median sales price for new houses sold in the U.S. Jeez, during March 430K. was 430700 according to the latest data from U.S. Census Bureau and the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. So $430,000, that is very up and to the right compared to what it was in 2019, the quote-unquote pre-pandemic when there was half the amount of building that's happening than there is right now. But then I also feel that, you know, with house prices being so high in certain areas, like here in San Diego, you know, you look at a, let's say, $800,000 house that's not brand new, and then you look at one that's brand new, and you see the differences, and I could see why some people would be like, well, I'd rather go with the new build. Yeah, it's costing me more up front, but if I compare that to a regular property, uh, like, I'd rather go with the new one. Well, yeah, and well, plus the builder, the builder has... Um Ways to incent you. Yeah. They could give you closing cost credit. Say. They can even do a price reduction if they really have to. Correct. They could be giving you upgrades in the house from your flooring, your you know, tile, your appliances, things like that. So they have other they maybe have other things to offer than a, a, a previously owned home does. Um, but you know, it is it is that it's that same thing, man, where I'm just like, this is so startling it, it's like this right and, now and what i one of the things that i you know i will say that i think a lot of people don't take the consideration when they see a new build although it's priced a lot you know lower or it might seem a little bit more affordable you are paying for uh, melarus up front and you are paying for an hoa and in the new builds in the new communities those melaruses aren't cheap they're like an extra <laughs> four to five thousand dollars a a year yeah and that in itself could be a, just a regular property tax payment for <clears throat> yeah. some people here in san diego yeah um but now now you're adding that plus the property tax rate, so you're literally coming out of pocket. I mean, on average, if for a new build, if you're around seven hundred fifty thousand, you're gonna be paying like a thousand dollars in property taxes and Melrose, like, and that's a kind month. of a month on a top month. of your principal and interest, your insurance that you better hope your house is not in a you know in a in a vulnerable area because that's also gonna play a big part. So yeah. You know, it's not always the most cost effective going the new build route. Um, but you but, know, that's but Nora's buying a dilapidated it, place that it, needs 150 grand of repairs right up front and is the same price. So you you come to two 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 crossroads. Like, which one do you want to go with? You know, yeah. some people are like, hey, I'll take the the one that needs work because I can work on it little by little and you know, kind of like m maneuver my way into it. Or you know, I'd rather just pay it. A lot more a month and just get everything turned clean. Ready. I know what I've seen from you guys here at the office, the people you're talking to and the applications you're taking, and even the purchase we're making. Uh, people are willing to pay the extra money when it has land that you can build an ADU on or do a garage conversion or do a second floor or all of the things I just yeah. mentioned. Yep. That is worth their money because, again, they're thinking with this cash flow mentality. And it's not about, oh, the new build is just a single family home or it's a condo or it's a townhome. It's not right. necessarily got an ADU in the back already. There are some neighborhoods you get out. To, you know, to the nicer parts, there's going to be an ADU already there. Yeah. Um, or it's a resale house that someone already built an ADU correct, on, and correct. people are going to be willing to pay that money. But if it came to new build SFR, single family residence, versus older house that has potential for cash flow and greater value by building on it, uh, I think that's an even score for most people. They're willing to take the place that needs some work financially because it will be worth that soon yeah the regular house is just going to ebb and flow with the market yeah and there's not a lot you can do with it so i can you, see that being a little more more of a neck and neck type of comparison and you know for the for the for the decider and, and i think that's a great comparison because i mean you look at it is it something that's already priced out that you can't really win much <clears> more <throat> on it or can you get something that you know you're actually going to be able to profit as you kind of go through you know mm -hmm. your years of paying your yeah, mortgage? Yeah. And I think that's something that you know you know you should take into consideration because maybe that that new build might not benefit you as much as you think down the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it it is nice to have a new home though. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice to have a new home. It's hey, nice to have a new neighborhood. Hotel, uh, I mean, uh, uh, elevators in your house. Elevator. <laughs> I, I went to go tour some uh, new builds here out in uh, dude, uh, the Millennia area. Dude. I'm like, dude, this is ridiculous. Like, I why yeah. <laughs> why what do you mean why not? What? <laughs> See, there's no reason why not. Elevator uh, yeah. in the house. Mark the. I, thought it, I thought it was Mark, a little I'll, bit too much. I'll take two. 
But yeah, I would definitely want an elevator in my house. Come on now. Show notes in the corner. We'll take two. Two elevators, please. Uh, okay, so let's let's close this out, Brian. Uh, this article, they're, they're suggesting there's four things you pay attention to. Number one, considering a smaller house. Number two, being open about geographic location. Number three, keeping construction costs down low. And number four, being mindful of future costs. We kind of already covered some of these things yeah. either in the show or when we're talking here about new construction versus uh, you know regular homes, that kind of thing. Um, I, I really do think that when it comes down to opportunity for long-term legacy cash and value uh, that's mostly where people are going to lay their head when they come to us yes there are people that are just coming in with their you know vanilla hey i'm just trying to buy a house yeah and that's totally fine too and in that case if you're trying to buy a house new build is probably going to be the way to go yeah yeah and and, and it, it all starts from when we speak to our clients and just really understanding what it is that they want and you know what they're looking to accomplish i think that's the most important thing because then you can really kind of you know move everything out of the way that doesn't need to be you know focused on and you can really just give them a clear picture of hey this is the example that we're doing you know we have plenty of clients that already have done this before they've you know had success so it's easier to just you know understand what they want and then be able to just provide that yeah, yeah. 